Good morning. It is indeed a good, good morning. It is fantastic to see you here today. Good to be together, and I can hardly wait to jump into the scripture passage this morning and the, and the teaching from God's word. But first, let's let's just have a little fun. Uh, you, you you know where the cowgirl takes her cowherd to have lunch? Cafeteria. That joke is an utter delight. Um, okay, uh, some of you didn't get that last one, but uh, ask somebody. Um, it, it, it's it's fantastic to have you here today, and I got a. I'll set you up on a on a plan I have. We'll see how it works out. But but here's my plan. We're gonna, I'm going to read a scripture passage out of the book of Ephesians here in a moment, and then I'm going to introduce, build in some tension. Now, I'm not going to create tension, because I think it's tension you already have. I know I already have it. I'm guessing most of us have it. Tension with this passage. Like, huh? Really? And then I'm going to spend the rest of this long time, Reggie warned you about, just trying to resolve that tension and say, okay, this may help to answer that, right? So that's, that's the big picture plan. Let's see how it works out. First of all, let's look at God's word in the book of Ephesians. And we're in chapter three, wrapping it up. And this is called a benediction. And um, sometimes you memorize it. And those of you who've been in uh, churches with more liturgy have heard this at the end of a service or end of an occasion often, etc. cetera. It's, it's a grand, swelling benediction. I want to unpack it today and, and see what it says. But listen, now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen. See, I don't think you can whisper that one. I think you've got to yell that one. Kind of, you've, got to, you've got to say it with full voice anyway. This is, this is a magnificent portion of Scripture. And so I want to build some tension into it and see, see if you can just connect with me. So, so first of all, we're just going to have this tension that exists between promise and experience. So here's the promise. Now to him who's able to give you immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, pause, huh, He's saying to God, who is able to give us more, incalculably more, immeasurably more, than we ask or imagine. Boy, I can ask quite a bit. And I can imagine a bunch. Hello? Anybody with me? Um, I, I remember encountering some of these kinds of verses as a kid. I, I, I remember this one specifically as a kid saying, I would like a Hershey's bar just to show up. And I can imagine five Hershey bars and thinking, this will be cool. Guess what? No Hershey bars. See the tension? Ah, let's, let's bring it up. Now, I've not been a kid for uh, quite a while, a um, long time, uh, but, but just in recent weeks, I've been saying to God, you know, not to tell you your business, God, and not to say I know everything, but looks like to me we could use some rain. Anybody else in the crowd talked about that? Yeah, okay. We could use some rain, God. And, and as a matter of fact, since I'm asking, I'd like an inch. Well, about three weeks ago, we got 95 hundredths in a week, and I thought, oh, okay, so you spread it out. Not exactly what I had in mind, but an inch. And by the way, I'm imagining four days of just solid rain. Now, this last week, some of you got an inch. Some of you got more than an inch. We got six tenths where I live, which is, if you're doing math, not an inch. And he says... He's going to give me immeasurably more than I can amass, ask or imagine. But if you're doing math, six-tenths is less than one inch. Hello? Huh. What's up with that? 
Now, before you start analyzing my faith or lack thereof or uh, other issues that, that are going on, uh, that's the tension we live with, I think, a lot of times, right? Is here's the promise of God I'm going to give you even more than you can ask or imagine, but then I ask for stuff and I get like nothing. Or I don't get even as much as I asked for. Or boy, my imagination can be a off the charts. What's up with that? Well, I think the rest of this passage actually explains that. And now my job is to see if I can if I can adequately unpack that enough to say, huh, this may be. I'll tell you up front, I probably don't have, let's, let's take the word probably out of that sentence. I don't have all the answers to this. I'm just, I'm just, you know, you don't know what you don't know, but I'm pretty sure I don't know all the answers to this. Because he's God and I'm not, and neither are you. Smile. See? And we all have limited knowledge and perspective. Amen? So, so see, we're, we're in this boat together. But here's some clues, I think, that will help us. So let's go to the next one, and that is that we are, he's going to do this immeasurably according to his power, he says, that's at work within us. Last week we talked about this whole idea of the power of God released by His Spirit that connects with us and dwells within us. And it is at the core of our inner being. He says, I want to give you power in your inner being. And then He says, so that Christ may dwell in you. It's His power it's with you. Now, so this phrase at once lifts the limits. Because if it's only my power of my inner being being at its best, that certainly has limitations. Me on my best day can do some stuff, but pretty limited stuff. God on his best day, oh, wow. He can do anything and everything. See, so on the one hand, it expands it. On the other hand, you understand, it puts parameters around it. It says, according to his power that should work within us. So therefore, if I ask God to do something that is bad, that is evil, that ain't going to happen. Because it's according to his power. His Holy Spirit's power. And the first word of Holy Spirit is holy. He is holy. He is a God that doesn't sin. And therefore, according to His power, it's going to be good. Also, according to His power, we're going we're gonna to get into this a little later, but His power is not always immediate as I want it. My, in my impatience, His power is sustaining and durable forever and ever. And I got to tell you, I would rather have answers tomorrow than forever. Anybody? But at this, he says, I'm going to do immeasurably more than you can ask or imagine according to the power that is within you. So again, on the one hand, this really raises the bar of what could happen immeasurably more. But it also says... This has to be in God's power, which is always in God's will, and always in God's timing, and in God's direction. Let's expand on that. The next one, for His glory, and, it, and, and I just put this much up, but for His glory in the church and in Christ Jesus, for His glory. Ah, see. See, a lot of the stuff I ask for is for me. That remind you of anybody you know or you have a mirror see a, a, a lot of the stuff I, I ask God for is for me and he says I'm able to do immeasurably more than you can ask or imagine a few weeks back Pastor Tom talked about uh, uh, taught us a message it's a great message I'm still just just parts of that just going through my head every day but but about it's more than you think and so I just played off of his title and said, it's more than you can imagine. Well, he's saying it's for his glory. So I got I to tell you, when my imagination runs wild, a lot of time it runs wild over me stuff. What would it be like to be a billionaire? <laughs> you know, I hear, I hear about one of these guys, whatever, sometimes they may. Wow, what would that be like? And, and that's imagination. Trust me, that's imagination. See, you, you, you understand? What would it be like to be able to dunk? Uh, that's imagination. Well, you know, what would it be like to, you, you understand that? 
but he's saying more than you can ask or imagine according to his power that's at work within you and to his glory that's his fulfillment that's his height that's his perfection according to God's glory in the church and in Christ Jesus ah so now we're getting to say God's going to give us even more than we ask or imagine see I got to tell you as a kid I imagined a lot of stuff I want now I, some of that stuff I look back and I imagined that I might want to do and could do at some point saying thank you God you didn't let me do that that, that is that, that doesn't seem meaningful and now I wouldn't I don't want to do that some of that was good and a lot of it actually I've gotten able to been able to do but frankly I got to be honest I never imagined what God would help me to do in his kingdom never imagined that I've been privileged to be in ministry for mo almost all of my adult life, to say it that way, and and have have personally interacted and led organizations where we've had over fifty thousand people in my lifetime in my ministry, over fifty thousand people who've made first time commitments to follow Christ. I never imagined that. That's beyond my imagination. Whoa! No, uh, to, to, totally. I didn't do any of the heavy lifting. God did all the heavy lifting. Please understand that. And and I, sometimes I didn't do any lifting at all. It just happened to be there. Uh, 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 but but He allowed me to walk and work through that. That's been beyond my imagination. Are are you, are you starting to f see what I'm saying here? See, to start with, I imagined all these amazing things that I might do for me, and God is saying. I'm going to let you do things that are beyond your asking. I didn't ask to do that. I should have. I look back and say, I, sh I should have been asking to do that, but I, I didn't ask or imagine that big. And God said, watch this. I'm going to blow your mind. See, God is saying, for his glory in Christ Jesus. Now let's go to the next one. And we're going to spend some time here. For next generations, he said and forever and ever. Now to him who's able to do immeasurably more than you can ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within you, for his glory in the church in Christ Jesus, for generations and forever and ever, amen. Ah, now we're starting. Here's a key factor of the reason that we have tension. Well, let me just tell you a horse story, and it'll tell you that. So I was just, uh, actually just last week uh, on, a, on a trail ride on one of my horses and uh, came to a place, I've been there many times before, and you're, you've come down through a, a draw, deep draw, maybe, maybe a canyon, whatever, and, and you've gone through a tight trail through some trees and stuff and you're back up and you're coming up the other side and it's a, it's a pretty steep climb and about halfway up there's a cow trail that goes off to the right that is looks it's a much better looking trail and it's much more gentle and it just it, it's it's obviously and and a horse will almost invariably say let's do this and want to go to that right trail and i totally get that because for the next 20 30 feet that looks like the best trail and my observation of horses, while I think they're quite smart, is they typically don't, aren't long-term thinkers, and the next 20 or 30 feet is more appealing to them than the next two miles. There's a point in this story, hang on. I've been on this trail a number of times. I know that that trail, when you go there, because I've let horses do that before, and, and just literally, just within about 30 feet, that trail gets under trees and stuff where, uh, you know, a cow critter can walk and maybe get a back rub, but a horse with a rider, <laughs> this is not going to happen. And at that point on that trail, to get out of it and back to the other trail, you have to turn and go up a very, very steep bank to get back up to that trail, which I've done a few times, because I was just relaxed and let the horse do what he wanted to do and thinking, uh oh, no good. So now I come to that why, and the horse's tendency is that looks good and looks like less resistance. And so I just give a little gentle leg pressure, rein pressure, and just say, no, we're on this trail. And the horse is always like, this idiot. But we do this. I'm talking about you now, not a horse. I'm talking about me. Did you get this? See, you're a human being. You're welcome. By definition, you are nearsighted. 
as a human being, right? You see around corners? No. Do you see next generations? You may imagine, but no. You see forever and ever? Guarantee you, no. And God, who sees everything about everything and the future, says, I know, son, daughter, that looks like the better trail. Looks like the easier trail. Looks like the smoother trail. And it is for the next 20, 30 feet. Or in God's case, he may say for the next 20, 30 years. But trust me, I see a longer view than that. You want to stay on this trail. Is that starting to make sense? See, see sometimes I ask God for things that would be good for 20 feet and would be disastrous for a mile that would be good for 10 years and be disastrous for the next generations and forever. Hello? Sometimes God pushes me, prompts me, nudges me, whispers to me, instructs me through his word in a path that seems unnecessarily steep and hard right now. And I just think, nah, I got an easier way than that. I got a better way than that. And God just says, trust me, I know where this leads. Trust me, follow me. See, for Jackson just started driving. <laughs> I'm his neighbor. Uh, I will be aware. I trust you, Jackson, but I'll watch too. Um, and 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 there's so many distractions when you drive, Jackson. There's so many things. There's so many forks in the road. There's so many turns. There's so many things. You need to have the big picture. You need to know why, you know, there's so many places you could cut corners and it's actually much more relaxing, but hmm, not cool. Everybody here with me? There's so many things that are easier right now that go very difficult later on. And so here's the perspective God is giving us. I want you to be asking and imagining not just for yourself and not just for today and not just for your own ease or comfort level. Start thinking in terms of next generations. Some of you say, well, I don't, I don't have kids. They didn't let you off. You influence next generations. Start thinking for next generations and then God just ups it and says forever and ever. <laughs> See, you're not destined to just matter for a hundred years or less. You're destined to matter forever. And God is saying, I want this to go on forever and ever. Amen? I just, I mentioned one thing to you early on. Let me go back to the rain thing. So I've been asking God for an inch of rain and got six tenths. Huh. But let's, let's, let's unpack that a little bit. The reason I'm asking God for rain is because I want stuff to grow, not die. Right? I'd like, I'd like for grass to be green again. I mean, I know I live in Wyoming and it's July and it's, just, it's kind of supposed to be this way, but okay. I'd like for to green up. I want trees to grow. I'd like for creeks to run. I'd like, I'd like for the land to be molded. Uh, are, you, are you starting to hit where I'm going here? I didn't get an inch of rain, but guess what? God's done all of that. I still got green grass in places. I got lots of trees on, 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 our, on our place. See, I think they're just spectacular. Some of them are huge goes beyond my imagination. I've got a couple of pines. I go there and once in a while I just go, whoa, don't come down. <laughs> are, are, are you with me? I, um, I live in a creek bottom and I've got beautiful ledges and God has shaped and formed that country in ways. This is why I want rain big time, understand? And what God has done over centuries is beyond my imagination, frankly. He's given me more than I could ask or imagine. He didn't, he didn't give me an inch of rain yesterday, but really the reason I want that rain, he's given me that and more than I could ask or imagine. Is that starting to make any sense? I, I, I don't want to stretch this too far, but saying if I look at the big picture, if I look forever and ever, if I look at, if I look at the macro scale of this, I can see I've lived with this message all week. So all week I've had God saying to me, see, see, 
See, I've given you this, and you didn't even imagine it. <laughs> yes, thank you. All, all week, this has stirred me to gratitude to say, I still don't have my inch of rain, by the way, and I want it, but, but <laughs> there's still tension here. Are, 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 are you with me? But see, I let you live in this kind of amazing, incredible, stupendous beauty. I happen to live in the place I would, if I had to choose any place on planet Earth where to live, it's right where I live. Who gets to do that? And it's amazingly gorgeous. Hello? See? See, big picture, God has given me, just right here and now, more than I ever asked or more than I could imagine. And sometimes I get hung up on the tension that he didn't do for me this hour what I was wanting. I'm back to the little kid wanting a Hershey bar again. Or, 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 see, and I should be more grown up than that, Reggie. I mean, it's been a while. And it's not Hershey bars anymore, although that doesn't sound bad. But I'm just saying, there's stuff now. Are, are, are you with me? See, we get such a limited, short-term view and say, God, because you don't give me everything I asked for or imagined now, huh, you must not be keeping your promise. And God's saying, really? Have you looked around lately? Have you seen everything I've given you? Oh, wow. See, I happen to have a couple of grandsons in, in the, here live in the audience today. And, and I get to thinking about what can happen through generations. Thinking what God has allowed me to see, what God has allowed me to do. And I just get so excited about what God is going to do through them. And maybe someday through their kids. And maybe someday through their kids. And we all know I'll be in heaven somewhere. Uh, maybe being able to look down on that. Uh, but, but I just get excited about God's going to do more than I've ever asked or I've ever imagined. Because we're just going to keep proliferating this. We're going to keep spreading this. We're going to keep watching this happen. Amen? I love everybody who's here today and everybody who comes to the church. I really, really do. But I, I, I just especially get excited about the kids and the teenagers we have here. Preteens and teens and those of you in your 20s, etc. I'm just saying, whoa, how incredible, exciting it is to see what God's going to do through you. I mean, he's going to do more than we ask or imagine. God has such great things. Now, now, if you're if you're an old geezer like me, you say, oh boy, I don't know about this next generation. Get over that. Here's what I will tell you. They'll make at least as many mistakes as you did. Do you hear what I just said? Smile about that. They'll make mistakes. They'll learn from them. In fact, they have tools to learn more quickly than you did. And many of them are smarter than I was. Hello. See, and, and so you love them and pray for them and give advice when asked in short doses and then be quiet for a while. That's great advice, by the way. And, and watch what God can do through their lives. Tell them stories. They'll pick up on the meaning of those stories like you wouldn't believe. And I'm, I, I'll just say to all, all of you young people, uh, unbelievable the, the, what God can do through you more than we can ask or imagine. See, when, when you get so old, you just say, oh, God, just let them get out of the house before they hurt each other. Oh, God, just please let them graduate high school. Oh, God, keep them out of jail. I got to tell you, God has higher aspirations than all of that. Right? God is saying, you ain't seen nothing yet. His grammar's better than mine, but I'm just saying. God is saying, wow, watch what's going to happen. And if I can be a bit player in that, if I can influence them, if I can encourage them, if I can open them up, hallelujah. And the best thing we can give to them is praying. I'm going to ask God to bless them. When I, when I wrap up here in just, just a very few minutes, actually, I'm going to pray that kind of a blessing that in your life and in your generations and forever and ever, God will do more than you can even imagine, let alone ask. See, I want to have faith in that. I want to have confidence in that. So I'm going to give you two homework assignments. 
I know school's out, but whatever. One is, reflect this week, God, what have you given me that's better than I even imagined? And just thank him. Wow, God. Wow. And you'll get some little stuff in there. You may have gotten five Hershey bars for all I know. Okay, but, but focus on big stuff, macro stuff. What's God done for you that's amazing? More than you could have even asked or imagined. I've been, I've been pulling back to say my, when I was a late teenager, early 20-something, the kinds of stuff that I was asking and imagining from God, and now what's reality saying, oh, wow, God, you're so amazing. You're so amazing. Wow. So, so think about that. The other thing is, pray. Don't be afraid to ask and don't be afraid to imagine, but expand your time horizons to say this could be for generations and forever and ever, and expand your focus to say this is for the glory of Christ Jesus and according to his power. This is not just to address one of my felt needs. Now I have to say, God, God gives me most of my felt needs even, so hallelujah. You know, it's not like, but there's stuff I'd like I don't have. But there's nothing I need I don't have. Are, are, are you with me? I'm pretty sure when I go to bed tonight, I'll worry about weighing too much, not weighing too little. Anybody else in the room? If you're starving, let us know. We'll help you out. We got food. But most of us worry about having too much. Amen? I mean, that's, we're, we're, we're so blessed to be who we are, living where we are. We just, we're just blessed with that. Hallelujah. I, I, I complain every once in a while because Esther buys stuff that I really like and I tell her then I can't avoid eating it. See, that's a complaint. Hello? Like that's a problem, people. Come on. That's more than you could ask or imagine. Right? See what I'm saying? Remember what it is God has given you and pray that God would, according to his power and for his glory and for all generations and forever and ever, God would do more than you ask or imagine. And the next time you feel tension because God didn't give you an inch of rain, call me. I'll need help. Let's pray. Holy Father, it is in the name of Jesus. It is in the power of the Holy Spirit that we just come humbly before you and acknowledge that we're nearsighted people. We tend to be self-centered. We ask for our own stuff and our own comfort. We tend to be nearsighted. What's happening now? What do I need yesterday, now? And lose sight of forever. Help us, God, First of all, to really believe you and trust that you will give us, you will do for us immeasurably more than we ask or imagine according to your power that's at work within us. For your glory in the church through Christ Jesus. And help us, God, to be thinking and praying for generations that are coming and blessing them and praying for them and believing in them that you're going to work through them, God, in ways that are amazing, amazing, abundantly, more than we could even imagine today. You're going to do stuff through them. We'll go, oh, wow, who knew? And forever and ever. I'm so bound to time, I really don't know what forever and ever actually means. It's just forever. And ever. And I'm going to trust you, God, that in the ages to come you will show the incredible riches of your grace and your glory through us. So help us this day to be mindful, God, that just because we don't get every little thing we ask here and now, that might be the wrong trail. And you have something much, much better for us. We pray all of this 
In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Thanks, guys, for listening. God bless you. You got homework to do now, remember. See ya.